Hello, welcome to WQLN PBS Homeroom. I miss Debbie. I am so glad you're here today. We have a fun topic to talk about today. Bunnies, yes, bunnies. This is the time when we start to see bunnies hopping all around and in the springtime, lots of animals. But before we get started with this, I wanna talk about something just as important, you. If you remember last time I was here with you, we had talked about some positive phrases before we started. So Miss Debbie's going to say something and I want you to say it after me. I want you to repeat it and I want you to think about yourself because you are awesome. And that's the first thing you're going to say. Say, I am awesome. Did you say it? Good. Say, I am smart. I'm kind. I am unique, I'm special, and give yourself a big hug and say, I am loved. Yes, my friends, you are, you are amazing. Okay, let's talk about these bunnies a little bit. So like I said, in the springtime, you see lots of animals coming out, and one of the animals that you see more often are bunnies. Sometimes we call them rabbits. Today we're going to talk about them being bunnies. And I have a special story about a bunny today. My story is called The Easter Bunny is Missing. Yes, the Easter Bunny is the one who's delivering a basket of goodies around. You might be familiar with the Easter Bunny. Well, the day before Easter, the Easter Bunny goes missing and all of his friends try to find him. And when they can't, they have to figure out who can save Easter and who could maybe take the place of the Easter Bunny. My friends, when we're done reading today, we're going to talk about the story and we're going to try to remember some of the other animal friends in the story. Can you do that? Yeah, when you listen to Miss Debbie read the story, Think about some of the animals that are in there and we'll talk about it afterwards. Okay, our story again is called The Easter Bunny is Missing. And the big sign says, wanted the Easter Bunny. And the story is by Steve Metzger and it's illustrated by Barbara Spurl. Okay. It was the day before Easter and spring was in the air. The forest animals had gathered at Blueberry Meadow to plan for their annual Easter party. It always took place after the children found their Easter eggs. You see some of his friends there. I can't wait for our party, exclaimed Bear. I'll bring the refreshments, said Fox. The crickets are scheduled to play, said Frog. Their music is hoppin'. Because crickets hop. But where's the Easter Bunny? Asked Fox, looking around. He's not here. How can we celebrate Easter without the Easter Bunny? Asked Mole nervously. Who will deliver the Easter eggs? Calm down, everyone, said Turtle. Maybe he just got lost. Let's try to find him. Are you remembering some of the animal friends in the story? Okay. Bear and Fox looked behind every tree in the forest. Mole checked all of the rabbit holes and burrows. Turtle and Frog searched around the lake. Any luck? asked Turtle. The other animals shook their heads. The Easter Bunny is missing. Bear said very sadly. What will we do? We've got to do something, said Mole. The children will be sad if they don't get their Easter eggs tomorrow. One of us will just have to fill in for the Easter Bunny this year, said Fox. It should be me and I'll show you why. Do you think Fox would be a good person, a good animal to fill in for the Easter Bunny? Let's see. 
Carrying a basket of colorful eggs, Fox led his friends out of the forest. Watch me, Fox called out as she put on a pair of bunny ears. I'd be the fastest bunny ever. And she took the Easter basket quickly and raced around to all the children's homes, hiding eggs under the bushes. She got done pretty quickly, but can you look at some of the eggs? Can you see what happened? Oh no. Wait a minute, said Mole. You're too fast. You dropped some of the eggs along the way. Children will find them much too easily. Sorry, Fox, but you can't be the Easter Bunny. Do you think you know who wants to be next? Frog. Let me do it, yelled Frog. I'm the best one for the job. And why is that? Asked Bear. Frog smiled. You've heard that Easter Bunny song, right? Hippity hoppity Easter's on its way, Frog sang. Well, who does hippity hoppity better than me? He might make a good Easter Bunny replacement. Let's see. Frog grabbed the Easter basket and went bouncing down the path. Hippity hoppity, hippity hoppity, Easter's on its way. Frog sang out. He didn't notice. Some of the eggs fell out and they broke. No way, said Bear. With all that bouncing up and down, you'll crack all the eggs. So he wasn't a good choice either. Let's see. Look at this little guy. It's Mole. I should be the Easter Bunny, said Mole quietly. Mole found the best hiding spots for the Easter eggs, but he couldn't always find his way out. Moles can't see very well and he got stuck. Sorry, Mole, said Turtle. Which of the friends haven't tried yet? Has Frog tried? What about Turtle? Turtle hasn't tried yet. What about Bear? Bear hasn't tried either. What about Fox? Yeah, Fox has tried. Let's see who's next. I'd be the best Easter bunny because I'm the strongest, said Bear. He loaded up his basket with dozens of eggs. But as he lumbered down the path, he banged his basket against the trees and he crushed many eggs. I guess I'm too strong, said Bear forlornly. Kind of sad. Let's see who's left. That leaves me, said Turtle. He strapped the basket of eggs to his shell and he toddled down the path. But when he finally reached a hiding place, 30 minutes had gone by. Fox shook her head. By the time you finish hiding all the eggs, it'll be Christmas. It looks like nobody's a good substitute for the Easter Bunny. Well, I don't care, said Turtle. I still want to be the Easter Bunny. No, said Bear. I want to do it. The animals argued back and forth, filling the forest with their shouting voices. The racket got louder and louder and louder. That's not a good way to be friends, is it? Let's see how they solve the problem. What's going on here? A familiar voice rang out. I could hear you all the way down Daffodil Road. Look who it is. Easter Bunny, Frog shouted, you're here. Where have you been? Asked Bear. Can you see where he's been? Looks like someplace nice and warm, maybe a vacation. I've been on vacation, the Easter Bunny replied. Hawaii was so much fun, I decided to stay a little longer than I planned. I hope you weren't worried about me. Now what is all this fighting about? Oh, nothing, replied Mole sheepishly, kind of embarrassed. Nothing at all.
It's great to see you, the Easter Bunny said as he began putting Easter eggs into his basket. But now it's time for me to get to work. I have lots to do for tomorrow. Hippity hoppity. And a big hippity hoppity to you too, said Frog. Happy Easter. The Easter Bunny skipped off to hide the eggs and he didn't drop a single one. So now we know why the Easter Bunny is the one to deliver the eggs in the basket, don't we? Yes. Oh, that was a good story. Do you remember some of the animal friends that were in the story? Yeah, me too. Let's come back here and take a look at my board and we'll talk about some of the friends in the story. So behind me, my board shows some of our animals that were in the story. Put Bunny over here. And we wanna talk about these animals and I wanna think about what animal first said that they wanted to take the place of the Easter Bunny and then who said it next and after that. So if you remember, we had Bear, Turtle, Frog, down here is Mole, and Fox. And they all wanted to take the Easter basket around to the children to drop an, or to hide off the eggs. So do you remember which animal offered first in the story to be the Easter Bunny? Yes, it was Fox. Fox first said that she would take the basket around and hide the eggs. But if you remember, she was too fast and she dropped a lot of eggs. Who was our next animal friend that offered to take the basket around? Do you remember? He sang hippity hoppity Easter's on its way. Yeah, the frog. The frog did. But the frog bounced so much, he dropped eggs and cracked them. All right, after the frog, we had another little fella trying to help out, but this fellow got lost because he couldn't see very well. Which one of these? Yes, down here, Mr. Mole. He had a hard time and he got stuck in that log, if you remember. Okay, next one, we had a big, big, animal friend who wanted to help out. Was it bear or turtle? Bear, you knew it. Bear was so big that he accidentally kept crushing that basket back and forth in the trees and more of the eggs smashed. Mm -hmm. And last, that left our friend Turtle. And turtle did a great job but do you remember what Turtle's mistake was, what he was having a problem with? He was very slow. They didn't think he would get the eggs delivered in time. Nice job. Well, luckily the real Easter Bunny, like this little bunny here, the real Easter Bunny came back in time and was able to deliver those eggs to all the children. Good job remembering about the story. That's very important. All right, my friends, I have a little game that I thought maybe you would like to play with me. And it's about delivering some eggs into the living room here. So what I wanted to do was talk to you about bunny, the word bunny. Can you put your lips together and make the b sound? B. Good job. I'm gonna show you what the letter B looks like and then we're gonna play my egg game. So a capital B, bring our bunny back here. A capital B and a lowercase b start the same way. They both start with a straight line down. The capital B has two bumps, b -b bumps like bunny. They both start with B. 
So after we drew our straight line down, we come back up and we wanna make one bump, two bumps. That's a capital B. Can you make that with me? Start up at the top, use your sky writer. Ready? Up in the sky. One straight line down, come back up. One bump, two bumps. Bunny and bump start with b, b. Good job. Okay, we have a lowercase b. The lowercase b is still a very tall letter. And it starts by writing a straight line down. The lowercase b only has one bump. And that's at the b -b bottom, which also starts with b. So the bumps go in the same direction when you do capital B and lowercase b. Can you practice writing in the sky with me? The letter B, let's do the lowercase b. Ready? Straight line down, bump around. Good job. Oh, you are smarties. I knew you were awesome. Well, okay, I'm gonna show you my game now. So you might have some of these lying around your house. Easter eggs, I have lots of Easter eggs. And on my Easter eggs, I practiced writing the letter capital B and lowercase b for B, bunny. So I have lots of eggs with bees on them. And what I thought we could do was look through some of these items I have and we could find the things that begin with the B sound, like bunny, and we could put them in the eggs, whoops, and hide them around the house. Okay, all right, let's find something. How about this one? This is a B, B, bumble bee. Does bumble bee start like Bunny, yes. We put our lips together and we b, kind of push that air right out of there. So I'm gonna put the bumblebee in my bee egg and I'm gonna put him in my basket for now. All right, how about this one? B, bear, say bear. See how your lips go together? Bear, bear starts like bunny. So we will put bear in another egg with our capital B and our lowercase b. Okay. How about this one? Cake. Can you say cake with me? Ready? Cake. Oh, did our lips go together like they do when we say bunny? Cake. They didn't. We can't put cake in a bee egg, that wouldn't start the same way. How about this one? It's a bell. Can you say bell with Miss Debbie? Bell. My lips went together like they did for bunny. I could feel that b, b, even in my throat, b, b. You can feel that. So we'll put our bell in the egg and put it in our b, b basket. Okay. Checking my time, I don't wanna go over. All right, this is a ball, b ball. Does ball start like bunny? Yep, goes right in our egg. How about cat? You say it with me, ready? Cat. Oh, our lips didn't go together. No, they said for cat. I'm gonna set him over here with a cake. How about this one? Crab. You say it with me. Crab. Nope, didn't start like b bunny. Oh my, I wonder if there's any more left. How about this one? Can you see this? It's a barrette for your hair. Yes. Can you say barrette with me? Barrette. B, B, Barrett, Bunny. They start the same. We're going to put this right in the egg. 
with the letter B. Okay, how about this big thing? That's a bus. Bus. Can you say it? Bus. Oh, I can feel it right in my throat. It starts just like bunny. I'm gonna fold my bus up and put it in a bee egg. All right, I have one more thing. How about cookie? Can you say that with me? Cookie. Did your lips go together? No, they didn't. So cookie will have to go off to the side and we can't put our cookie or any of these items in our bee eggs. So I'm going to go hide the eggs in the living room and work when I look around and see if we can find some eggs with just the letter B on it. Can you wait for me? Close your eyes and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And snap, the Easter eggs are hidden. And I have a special friend here to help me. It's my daughter, Avery. She's going to help find the Easter eggs. Hello. Avery, we're looking for eggs with the letter B on them. This is what the letter B looks like. Straight line down, bump, bump. Straight line down, one bump. Do you think you can help us find some eggs? Yes. Okay. Okay, let's go find some eggs. So this one has a double bump so, and a singular bump next to it and it matches the picture, so it's gotta be a B. This one doesn't have any double bumps, so it's not a B. Neither does this one. It doesn't match the picture whatsoever. This one has a singular bump and a double bump, so it's a B. This one also has a double and a singular, so it's a B. This one also has a double and singular, matches the picture, and it makes that B sound. This one's singular, and it sounds full, so it must be a B. Along with this one, a double and singular. Makes the same sound, and it must be a B. Good job finding all the eggs with a letter B. Well, that was a fun little game. I hope you can play it at home, too. The next thing I have for you is a little bunny craft. And I thought this was so cute and it can be so simple to make. You don't even have to have a sewing machine. You can use either glue or a sewing machine if you have one, or you can even stitch it by hand. So I'm gonna show you a easy way to make just a cute little bunny. So first of all, I just drew a bunny pattern on some hard paper. And then I found a nice spring piece of material that I liked. I ironed it nice and flat and make sure to have your adults do that. Don't you use the iron. So once you get it ironed and flat, you're going to put the two pretty sides together and then you'll lay out your pattern. When you have it nice and smooth, you can take a pen and draw on the bad side of the fabric, the opposite side, and then you can go ahead and remove your pattern. And then I used what's called pinking shears. And you want to have an adult do this, friends. You don't want to use these shears. They have little zigzag edges on it just to make it kind of fancy. You don't have to use these kind of shears. I just thought it might look cute. So I've already started cutting out around my pattern. And you very carefully want to cut out around it. It might be a good idea to pin your two pieces together before you start cutting, and then they won't move on you. Get those out of the way. And now 
I have two pieces of material. Let me get them separated. My good sides and my bad sides. So what you would wanna do, if you have a sewing machine, you would want to put your fabric together. And actually this bunny is sewn with some really rough edges to it. So it doesn't have any kind of hems or anything. It's just sticking out just like that. So if you have a sewing machine, or actually even if you're just using glue, you would put the bad sides together and then you would just stitch around the edge of the bunny. If you're using glue, you would go ahead and put some glue around the edges of the bunny. And you don't wanna put it right to the very edge because you kind of wanna leave a little bit of a, um, a hem on the end to make it look a little extra cute. I would sew or glue up at the top part and then leave the bottom part open part way because you wanna take some stuffing and you wanna stuff the bunny. Once you're done, you would go ahead and just finish stitching up the bottom or using your glue. And if you use glue, let it dry for a while. I know you wanna hug it right away, but definitely let it dry. And then when you're all, all done and you have your bunny together, I chose a pretty kind of a ribbon and I just tied around its neck. So I have my little bunny to cuggle. You can find um, lots of fun activities on wqln.org, learning at home page. And my friends, thank you so much for joining me. Remember, keep reading, keep learning, and keep watching wqln.org, where learning comes to life.